Hi everyone, it is Friday afternoon and I am here at Fast and Five. This is Morgan Vaughn and I'm here with Peter Van Skoyek, the supervisor for the town of East Hampton. Hi, Peter. Hi, Morgan. Thanks for having me back. Very happy to have you. So we have next week, we have, we have two things I really wanted to talk about and anything obviously that you want to, but next week we have um, on, is it next week? Yeah, it is. Um, on LTV channel 22, on Thursday, October 29th at 6.30, we're having a meeting with the, um, we're gonna be filming the East Hampton Town Board and the East Hampton Town Police Chief for an important discussion regarding police reform. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I can. So we're having a special meeting and this is the basically the kickoff for what is the state mandated police reform and reinvention uh, that has been um, issued by Governor Cuomo in response to you know what we've seen uh, in the national stage uh, some instances of um, you know police brutality and questions about you know whether or not the police are really uh, you know acting in a way that they should or their ways to address what some are saying is um, you know institutional racism and whatnot. Um, and so as part of that effort, we are having a special meeting. Now, from my standpoint, um, East Hampton is actually ahead of the curve on many of the mandates that the governor's included in, in the handbook and the reforms have already been put in place for several years. We have a very active community policing program. There's a significant amount of training. I was actually very impressed when I first came on to the town board and met with uh, the previous chief, uh, Eddie Ecker, uh, to really go through you know, what our police department does and how they, how they train. I uh, was really quite impressed. And Chief Sarlo has really made an effort to address uh, any concerns about um, you know, uh, policing within the community. He's been very good at communicating with the public. And I have to say, I'm, I'm really pleased and impressed with all of our uh, folks in blue who, who keep us safe. That being said, there are always ways to improve. And we want to hear directly from the community. This is an outreach to the community to let us know what concerns you might have. Uh, what ways you think that the police can better serve the community. Um, it's an opportunity for the community to understand some of the challenges the police force faces, uh, to understand the training that they go through and their policies and procedures about policing within our community. The governor's um, police reform bill also uh, wants us to reach out to those specific groups in the community that may, uh, you know, feel uh, that they're not uh, being policed uh, the same. Um, special group. Uh, whether it be LGBTQ communities, uh, people of race, uh, different ethnicities, religious uh, differences, whatnot. Uh, it's, it's an outreach to broad sector of our society to make sure that we have an inclusive discussion about police and police reform. Uh, you know, sadly, it only takes the actions of a few uh, to cause an entire profession to be painted uh, with, uh, you know, with uh, what has been, you know, an outcry against against the actions against George Floyd and others, Breonna Taylor, et cetera. Um, I ask that community members keep that in mind. Our police department served us so very well during the pandemic a time when we were on lockdown, shut down. Uh, they ensured our safety. They, they, you know, resuscitated people who've had heart attacks, saved people in automobile accidents, you know, and I think it's just, it's really sad and unfortunate that they get painted with uh, actions by a few from somewhere else. 
And, um, you know, I think that's been hard on morale. Um, and I think, you know, our community needs to keep that in mind and have some empathy for those who serve. Um, you know, we're all human beings. This is, I think, a really good opportunity for us to better communicate with each other and to better understand each other. And there's no better way to do that than some other platform than Facebook, <laughs> in my opinion. Or uh, possible way to do it. <laughs> we can't do it in person right now, uh, but we're doing the next best thing, next closest thing. We're going to have a Zoom meeting. People can call in and participate. We encourage all members of the community to do that. I think it's interesting what you said that it is one of the only professions that I can think of that you get painted with such a broad stroke. I mean, there, we all know that there are bad doctors and yet it isn't like you refuse to go to the doctor or you're going to shut down doctors. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about just briefly is that the whole idea of defunding the police, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I don't think that that is the best way to, for anybody to have ever said anything. <laughs> and clearly, um, well, what do you think about that? Well, first of all, I'll say it was a really terrible phraseology chosen to describe what was really intended. And uh, I've had a discussion uh, with a number of people, and including my own children. Uh, you know, I think the, the concern is that in many cases, uh, we rely upon police departments to take care of social problems that other agencies are probably better suited to have to deal with. And I think it's really important for people to understand this. This is a really important aspect. We're asking police departments to do everything for us. It's almost like, uh, you know, and we, we ask our teachers, frankly, to do way more than just teach. You know, we're, we're asking them to be mental health professionals in some cases, to to, to be parents in some cases uh, where, you know, where parenting is absent within a child's life. I mean, teachers take on an awful lot. So I think the, the idea behind defunding the police, and again, it's a terrible phraseology in my mind, is that we as a society commit more funding and redirect some of those responsibilities away from the police. Let's not burden them with those aspects. Uh, and have somebody else be able to respond. I think that's the, the basis of it. Um, and to some degree, I agree with that. that but I, I don't believe in taking funding away from our existing policing. I mean, as it is now, especially in our own community, uh, you know, we ask our police department to do a great deal for us, uh, especially on a seasonal basis. Our, our force is geared for the, the high season and uh, you, you know, we have, uh, you know, over 400 calls on a busy summer weekend uh, for RPD. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, and, you know, I think our, our police department serves us quite well, but there, there probably are instances, uh, and, and maybe it's more pronounced in, in big cities uh, instead of a small town like ours where you know, um, you have somebody uh, who lives on the street and is mentally ill and some problem occurs and rather than being able to maybe de-escalate that situation, it, it, it becomes heightened and the response is uh, maybe not what, it, what uh, it should be. Again, I think, you know, our training of RPD is, is uh, avoids that. It, they, they teach de-escalation. That being said, you know, there's always ways to improve. As I said before, it's a good opportunity for us to have a discussion as a community about the role of policing within our community, ways to uh, better understand each other and, uh, you know, move forward together. So I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and again, I think having those conversations publicly is helpful. I think it's important for the community to understand the demands on policing and for the police to understand the demands on the community and uh, that we can work through this and uh, we can be better for it. So this will be the, what you guys have been doing with the town board meetings that people can call from the community can call up through the Zoom meeting. Yes, so we'll have, uh, we'll have the police department uh, go through, uh, the chief will be going through, you know, some of the training mandates that, they, that they're under currently, uh, 
community policing standards and, and policies uh, and run through sort of a, a, a snapshot of, of what we get as an annual report from the police department in terms of the kind of activities that they engage in on a daily basis, you know, traffic stops, uh, you know, uh, criminal investigations, that sort of thing. Uh, so he'll give, uh, the chief will give a, an overview of that. And, uh, and then we'll talk a bit about what the police reform and reinvention uh, is, is about, talk about the structure of how this conversation uh, moves forward. We'll be taking comments from the public. It's really a listening session. Those comments will uh, be taken into consideration by uh, a committee that the town board will appoint. Um, and there's a framework and a timeline uh, we have to adopt um, an end plan before uh, April of 2021, or I think it's by April 21st, but uh, it's April 21. So uh, that's that's what this is the kickoff for that process, basically. Okay, that sounds great. Um, <laughs> someone just walked in. Hi, <laughs> have a good weekend. <laughs> um, um. What about, so next week, we and I wanted to just touch on quickly, next week starts early voting. Um, yes. So, so actually, so not next week, tomorrow. Saturday. Saturday is the first day of early voting in East Hampton. And, and everybody in East Hampton goes to, can go to Windmill Village for Oh, so yeah. 219 Akabonic Road is the location. It's Windmill Village, the community. I believe the polling will be at the community center as it was during the primary. Okay. And um, you should check the website for the hours because the daily hours change. Uh, I think it starts as early as eight, and eight or nine in the morning on some days and not until noon on others. So be sure you check the schedule for the day you wish to go and vote. Uh, and that will continue from Saturday through till uh, November 1st. And right, then, we're going to have we have tomorrow, actually, Saturday, tomorrow, and Sunday is 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. <laughs> And then LTV has it on its crawl, and we're going to be doing a special crawl during the shows and during the um, and on and on LTV that'll have the daily times. That's terrific, and and that information will also be up on the town's website. Excellent. I don't have all the dates in, uh, in front of me right at the moment. It is, it is a different. It is different every day, with the exception of Saturday and Sunday seems to be ten to three each time, but the other days are definitely different. And like you said, I think it's only it's one or two days that starts really early, which is good for some people. That's great. Monday, in fact, starts at 7 a.m. So that's great. Um, is there anything else that you would like to chat about this week? Yeah, I just want to mention that uh, we'll have the, the uh, 2021 town budget hearing on November 5th. Okay. And that'll be at 11 a.m. And uh, if anybody's interested in calling in about that, they can do that or they can um, you know, watch on, online. <clears throat> we'll be discussing at the 10th. Uh, proposed leaf blower legislation, wow. taking recommendations to the Energy and Sustainability okay. Committee. <clears throat> We've also had a lot of in, input from residents about this issue. The uh, a lot of discussion about public water being used for open loop geothermal. The Suffolk County Water Authority is concerned about uh, <clears throat> water being used for that. Sorry, I got a crick in my yeah, throat. I think you need some water. <laughs> <clears throat> You're right. We'll have a discussion about that um, at uh, Tuesday 10th work session. We'll be discussing the designation of Second House as a historic structure. It's kind of remarkable that the town had never done that. Um, we're in the process of restoring that structure. We're moving towards phase three of the, of the uh, restoration. And uh, oddly enough, that no one had ever designated it as a historic building, certainly more than qualifies. We'll also be discussing uh, UR maps, the fees and assignments for road improvements within the urban renewal maps, uh, that we need to do an update on that. The last time those numbers were adjusted was back in 20, 2003. So it's been 17 years and uh, the, the numbers don't really refer reflect the reality of where assignments should be at this point. So we need to make an adjustment there. 
Well, Peter, again, thank you so much for meeting with us and giving us this little lowdown. And I'm excited for the meeting, the police reform discussion next week, and for hearing more about what is going on in the early days. Yeah, thanks for, so much for having me back on uh, this week. And again, uh, you know, our numbers remain uh, pretty low for infection with COVID, but that's only because the public is is continuing to wear masks and being careful. Uh, we did uh, we did have a lot of fun this week, and we'll do it again on Monday. Uh, Kathy Burke Gonzalez and I, along with members of the um, the senior nutrition program from Human Services, have been going around visiting our 90 year old plus participants anyway. this week. We had over 40. And uh, I've been, it's sort of been like The Bachelor. I've been going around handing out roses and proclamations <laughs> and uh, little birthday cakes to them. It, oh it's so God. wonderful. It brings so much joy to, to both us and to them uh, to be able to see them and, and speak with them and, and you know, give them some, some encouragement. These are, these are folks that have been shut in, especially vulnerable during COVID and you know, I've been very isolated and it's just heartwarming. Our human services department has done such a wonderful job preparing over 40,000 meals for shut-ins during the last, um, you know, what, is it eight months now? I don't even know. <laughs> eight months, 15 years, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it is somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's been remarkable and, and, you know, it's so appreciated by the community, by, by uh, those seniors and by their families, many of whom uh, live in other states far away and are concerned about their parents and loved ones. And uh, it's reassuring to them and, and to uh, their loved ones as well. So that's been really heartwarming and fun. And we'll, we'll put out some uh, photographs in, in some- I was just uh, about to add. In a press release about that it's as good. well, because it, it's really been great. And uh, we look forward to doing more of that. Excellent. So, uh, you know, reach out to your friends, check in on them. Uh, you know, people are isolated, they're anxious, they're this is uh, wearing on everyone, and um, we just need to, you know, show a little love. So. Thank you, Peter, so much. Thank you, Morgan. Be well. Stay safe. See you next week.